Good morning. Did everyone enjoy your extra hour of sleep? And why aren't more people here? <laughs> still, still napping, I think. And no, good morning. In the name of Jesus Christ, good morning and welcome to worship on this Lord's Day. It is good to be gathered together in worship and honor and praise of our Savior. Thank you very much, uh, Pastor Ken. <clears throat> Excuse my voice. Uh, I would like to talk just a couple of minutes about the importance of this stewardship campaign and our generosity and how it matters to just one aspect of where that stewardship campaign money actually goes. This aspect has to do with keeping the elements out of our building, keeping the building warm and comfortable and properly lighted and so on and so forth. There are many other reasons to, to participate in the stewardship campaign, buying turkeys, uh, the outreach uh, mission, the ministry, and so on and so forth. But today I'm going to focus just on the physical building and what the trustees are responsible for. Uh, this brochure, glossy brochure that explains the beautiful mosaic in the, in the narthex, reminds us that the uh, present Fairhaven site was purchased in 1968, and the original building, this building that we're in now, was dedicated in 1970, followed by adding the new additions, new in the eye of the beholder these days, uh, in 1970, the Fellowship Hall, I'm sorry, 1990, the Fellowship Hall, the kitchen and the, and the classrooms, the education wing down there. So if you do the quick arithmetic, the building and most of our systems, original systems are 54 plus years old, requiring tender lover, loving care and therefore money to, to help maintain this real property and to meet the ever-changing, ever-changing, ever-changing state and county codes and inspections. And trust me, they are ever changing and ever changing. So just like our own homes and, and our own property, we have to plan and spend wisely, which we work very hard to do through our board of trustees and other key church committees such as COPA. To be more specific about this challenge, we have spent or will spend by year's end, just a couple of months now, well over, ready, $180,000 just for the efforts ranging from big ticket items in the church building, like replacing the outdated and out of code fire alarm and all these gadgets you see on the, on the wall, strobes, alarms, bells and whistles, uh, to retiring a huge loan that we took out years ago to that allowed us to rebuild our HVAC system, our heating, ventilation, air conditioning system. And it even rolls to more mundane items than those big ticket items, such as pumping our septic tanks, replacing the rotten wood and repainting almost everywhere outside, replacing interior windows, replacing and, and adding exterior lighting uh, that I hope you can tell from out there, uh, renovating the two old sheds in the back, custodial services, liability and property insurance, Verizon bills, Pepco bills, Washington gas bills, and on and on it goes, $180,000. Um, there it is. So yes, our stewardship and contributions of time and money are absolutely crucial to what we do here. But all this said, it would be my theme for this stewardship uh, campaign to ask only that we all do what we can, when we can, and if we can. So help if you can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Skip. And if we had to pay you for all the hours that you've had to spend up here, we probably, yes, yeah, <laughs> or more. <laughs> He's been very diligent in, in keeping on track of everything that needs to be going done around here. So we thank you. So with that in mind, 
We are here to, to praise God and to thank him for all the blessings that we have been able to have this week. And with that in mind, would you please prepare your hearts and mind for worship and stand and let's do have the call to worship together. Come into God's presence with singing and praise. We join this Bring dancing and melody, joy and laughter. We gather with the great power of the witnesses who came before us. Sing a new song to God, even as we remember ancient wisdom. We embrace a saint who died in faith. And we decorate the foundation of our hope. Please remain standing for our hymn of praise. Come, let us join our friends above. Verses one, two, and four. <laughs> Veterans Day. Um, and so uh, we, we should recognize the veterans who are in our midst and part of our congregation. If you have served in, uh, in our armed forces in any capacity, would you, would you stand and be recognized? Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, you walk with us through life's journey. You offer us love and hope and grace. You offer us your son to walk with us. You offer us your Holy Spirit to transform us and to give us strength and perseverance. So gracious God, continue to reveal yourself to each one of us. Because whether or not we acknowledge it or know it, you are with us. That is the promise that you are with us till the end of the age. So gracious God, we give you thanks for 
this congregation, for Fairhaven, and for the relationships that are built here, first relationships with you that are strengthened through worship and prayer and study, but also relationships with one another that allow us to reach out in physical and virtual hugs and offer support and care for each other. Thank you, oh God, for this loving community. As we come to worship this day, we give thanks for those who have served our nation, for the men and women um, who have served our, our in our military. We give thanks for their work and for all that they um, have accomplished on behalf of this nation. Continue to bless them and help us, oh God, to care for our veterans, for sometimes they seem forgotten. Loving God, we also lift up um, others who get forgotten in the ways of life, and especially our young people today who are struggling, or younger people. There are so many issues that they face. Help us as individuals and as a congregation to be, uh, to be supportive, to, break down, to help to break down barriers that uh, keep people from advancing their careers and their lives, help them to know they belong and they are welcomed and that they are cared for. For those who are facing, um, for, for a nation that is built upon um, racism, Help us, oh God, to dismantle the structures of racism in our midst and help us to be beacons of hope and new life so that we might recognize your presence and in each person, which gives us value. We pray for all of those who are going through difficult times. Um, we ask you to be with uh, the victims of the tornadoes in uh, in the South yesterday. Help them to rebuild lives, help them to find perseverance and strength for those who have lost loved ones. Be with them and strengthen them. For any who are traveling, grant them traveling mercies. As our nation uh, goes to the polls or, or votes during this season of elections, be with us and grant, oh God, that um, the things that separate us uh, might be, might, we might find ways to compromise and we might find ways to build bridges and we might actually listen to one another so we might build upon the great history of this nation. Keep, uh, keep all of us safe and at peace. For those who are in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit, we lift them before you. We especially hold Edward and John and Lisa and John and Anders and Maria Elise and Chris Ann and Wendy and Jeff before you. Bring healing and strength to their, to their bodies, their minds, their spirits, and be with them as the great physician, O oh God. Today, as we come to remember the saints of this congregation, let their member, memories continue to guide us as they are part of the fabric of who we are as Fairhaven. So grant, O oh God, that, that we continue to show love and grace and peace, for it is all centered in you. And all of these things we lift up in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, who is our Lord and Savior. Thanks be to God, and amen. Is it time for our scripture lesson? Maybe remain seated for this one from the book of Ephesians. It's a letter written by, the, by Paul from prison um, to the church in Ephesus. So I'm reading Ephesians chapter 1, verses 11 to 23. <clears throat> in Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, 
who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope of which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, what, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, and not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, time for our children's message. And I would invite the children to come and meet me here in the front if you would like to come on up. And I'm going to sit here on the step because I find it easier to get up than afterwards. <laughs> I'm getting of a certain age. <laughs> it's easy to get down. <laughs> Hard to get. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love those sneakers. I want to get a pair. <laughs> Can I have yours? No, no I'm kidding. Um, so, do you ever write thank you notes? Mom, your mom and dad ever ask you to write a thank you note for a gift you got? Yeah. Yep. We get, a, get our Christmas gift or a birthday gift or a special gift. And my mom always said, now you have to write a thank you note. And it could, it, it, sometimes it was two sentences. Dear grandma, thank you for the blank. I like it a lot. Love Ken. <laughs> Something like that. But it just, it shows that we appreciate the gifts that we receive. And the reason I bring that up today is Paul's, letter here that um, that Miss, Mrs. Green just read to the church in, in Ephesus, which is a city over in, in the Middle East. Um, so around, Paul was writing, and he, he writes in there, he thanks God. for the, He thanks God for the people that he has touched there. And so I created maybe what might have been a little thank you note from Paul. He starts it this way. He says, I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you. And that's just one sentence. I do not, I, he never stops giving thanks for the people because they have faith in God. But there's about three or four different sentences in the first 20 verses of, of Ephesians that talk about giving thanks for all of the people of that city that Paul has met. He thanks God for the people because they have faith. And so if you were to thank people here, or if we were to thank some people here for the way that they teach us our faith, you might thank your Sunday school teachers, right? Maybe. Ms. Trika? Or your mom? Or you might thank the Vacation Bible School leaders? or the leaders who put together um, family fun nights. You might thank the people, we might thank the people who teach us music. 
I don't know. I thank you for being here because the way, because you being here and the way that you interact with us teaches me something about God's love. So there are lots of people to thank. And I think we need to remember to do that. And I hope that I'm, I practice the, my own words here. So if, you, if someone does something nice for you, maybe you don't have to write them a formal note, although it's very nice to do that. But saying thanks is a great thing to do. And just to appreciate what they teach you and what they give to you. So let us pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for your love. Thank you for these children who are part of our lives. And thank you, oh God, for everyone here who helps to nurture us in faith and in love. Guide us throughout the week and help us to continue learning in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here. Blessings. join together in a word of prayer. Gracious and holy God, reveal yourself to us. Open our eyes that we might see you. Open our ears that we might hear. Open our minds that we might understand. Open our hearts that we might accept. And put our tongue, our hands, and our feet into action that we might serve. May these words be words from you, O God, and through them may you be revealed in this time and place. In Christ's name, amen. Setting our hope on Christ. Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, in Christ we have also obtained an, an inheritance having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. We, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. 
Paul founded this congregation and he's writing a word of thanks, a word of encouragement for the people. He offers some uh, deep theological beliefs and believes, first of all, that in the spirit God acted upon the Gentiles and brought them into, uh, into relationship with God and with one another. They too have inherited the redemption and love offered in Jesus Christ. He begins this letter with a very bold assertion about Jesus. It says, Jesus is the Christ, the one who is exalted above all the universe. And because he is Lord of all, Paul was among the first to set his hope on Christ. Because Christ is Lord of all, the Ephesians can set their hope on Christ. Because Jesus is Lord of all, we can set our hope on Christ. We set our hope on Christ because he offers us redemption. And that's um, Stephen Fowl writes, to, particip to set our hope on Christ is to participate in the drama of redemption to trust that God is at work in all things and at all times, and that God will bring all things finally to peace and shalom and new life. But to know that redemption, it begins with a need for forgiveness, the human need to be redeemed from sin. So we set our hope in Christ as we seek God's forgiveness and God's mercy. I don't think there's anybody in this room who's perfect. Could be wrong about that. I don't know. Um, I know I'm not. I'll start there. Most of us know we are imperfect human beings. And this might be a litany of some of my own stuff, or this might speak to you. We'll see. Um, you know, we, we get irritated with family members and, and, and with neighbors. And even a good cup of coffee doesn't cut that irritation. And so when we become irritated, we become alienated from each other. We separate ourselves from each other. We have a tendency to use one another, to bank on our relationships, to get what we want, not necessarily what is best for the other person. We become angry then when the people won't give in to our whims. And then we look around. That's our stuff. Then we look around and we see societies in equalities. We see the people who have money and influence and power. And if our eyes are open, we also see the ones who don't have money and influence and power. We do see that racism is built into the very fabric of our society, and it is so insidious that it becomes hard to recognize and even to acknowledge our own privilege and our own participation in it. I could go on and we could talk about um, how we um, misuse the earth's resources or how violence is permeating our culture. Yes, we and the rest of the human race are in need of redemption, of mercy and forgiveness. And we can place our hope in Christ for in Jesus' resurrection, we witness the power of God to overcome sin and death. We set our hope on Christ who offers us redemption, but we set our hope on Christ who offers transformation through the power of the Holy Spirit. In the Spirit, our lives are being transformed day by day. God loves us to enough to welcome us into relationship as we are, but God loves us too much to let us stay the way we are and continues to work in our hearts and in our lives each and every day. Each day we continue to grow in the knowledge and love of God. And when the spirit of God is present in our hearts and lives, our lives are never the same. See, in God's love, we learn how to forgive others. And we do the hard work of taking those alienated relationships and rebuilding the blocks and, and the strands of relationship we allow our anger to dissipate and to motivate change rather than to break up the relationship. And the spirit will work with us 
And rather than allowing us to use one another to get what we want, the Spirit brings us together so that we collaborate together and come together with others to build a community, God's beloved community. Then as the Spirit continues to reveal love to our hearts, we begin to recognize the dignity of, our fellow, of each and every fellow human being, for we are all created in God's image. And when we acknowledge the value of each of our human siblings, we start to dismantle the structures of racism and oppression and pain that are in our society. And if we're truly loving each of our siblings, human siblings, we cannot act violently against them. And we work to seek their welfare. That's the power of the spirit working in our lives. The spirit helps us to serve one another and helps us strive to do justice in the world. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a day by day process that started long ago and that will continue until long after we've gone to our eternal reward. But we participate in this drama of redemption and we accept forgiveness for, our, for ourselves and allow the spirit to transform our lives so that together with others, we might transform God's world. We can set our hope on Christ who is seated at God's right hand, bringing redemption to the universe. And we're part of the process. Along life's journey, we have folks who help us along the way who inspire us and empower us and help us to be the best that we can be and help us to look for God and the leading of the spirit in our midst. Today is All Saints Day. It is that day that we celebrate the lives of those who now are enjoying their everlasting life with God. We celebrate their lives but we also have to realize that no saint was perfect in this life. That they all came to understand the redeeming love of God. But God marked them as God's own. They're God's own child. These were the men and women who set their hope on Christ and modeled discipleship in this life. And these saints are the ones who offer us a window through which we could glimpse the love and peace and power of God. The United Methodist Church doesn't have any named saints. We do honor those who have been named saints by other denominations. But we do have men and women who have propelled us forward in faith. We celebrate today the lives of three Fairhaven members who pointed us toward the love of God. This past year, each one of them went on to their eternal reward. But as we gather today, we remember Cheryl and her smile and her laughter and her willingness to serve and her love for everyone. That was all just, that was infectious. And we remember Judy. She had the ability to connect with people of all cultures. That was an inspiration or is an inspiration to us to continue to do the same here. And we remember Vicki. Her evangelistic spirit told the story of Jesus in thought, word, and deed first to her own family, but also to every person she met in the world. And isn't that what we're all called to do? So as we recall these lives today, and we think about the lives of all of God's saints who have influenced us on the journey, let them be an example for us. Let them be an example so that we too might set our hope on Christ and entrust our lives to Christ today, here and now. So that by the spirit, we might participate in the drama of redemption 
know the forgiving love of God and the transforming power of the spirit so that as we journey, we too are led into everlasting life. Set your hope on Christ. Amen. And we do want to, at this time, remember these saints of our church. So I'm going to move to the altar, but as I, I'm going to ask you to stand in honor of uh, Cheryl and Judy and Vicki, but as we read their names, um, members of their family or their designee, uh, we'll, we'll light a candle in their memory. And then we will have a, a moment of silence and read, Rita will lead us in the prayer of remembrance. Will you please stand? Friends, today we remember Cheryl Combs. We remember Judy Johnson. We remember Vicky Prasad. Let us silently offer our thanks and praise to God. Microphone. We bless your holy, holy name, O oh God, God, for all your, your servants, servants who have finished their course, now, now rest from, from their labors. Give, give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Christ, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now we come to the point in our service where we lift up and praise and thanksgiving our offering. And as the uh, ushers come forth, we give thanks for those who have given here in the sanctuary and those who give at home to their ability.
pray. Please be seated. And prepare your hearts to come to the table of the Lord. As we receive communion today, we will be receiving, we will eat together first the bread and then we'll uh, receive the cup. We will do that separately rather than uh, together this morning. Let us come to Christ's table. The Lord be with you. And the also with, with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right, right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priest and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of the apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and our fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna and Christ, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks to God, and he gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those we have named this morning. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, strengthen us to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As forgiven, reconciled people of God, let us pray the prayer our Savior taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
When we break the bread, we share in the body of Christ. And as we give thanks over the cup, we share in the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep the feast. I invite you to take a piece of, of bread, a wafer, and let us share together the body of Christ, the life of the world. Body of Christ. For me. Thanks be to God. I invite you to drink from the cup of salvation, the blood of Christ poured out for all. Gracious and loving God, we give thanks for this day, O oh God, we give thanks, Lord, for you bringing us into communion and the great cloud of witness to share and the loving giving and taking of your presence. Lord, we ask that you would continue to anoint us with your power. We ask that you would cover us with your grace and mercy. And we ask that you would send us forth in your love so that we can spread the word of love among the world. This is our prayer. Hear it in Jesus' name. Amen.
as we go forth from this place today. Go forth in love, go forth in grace, go forth in joy, go forth in peace. Go forth to serve God and your neighbor through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.